welcome back viewers so in today's session we will be discussing about the osteology of the clavicle you know osteology is very important in order to study anatomy it forms a very important part of anatomy so if you want to understand the origin and insertion of the muscles the knowledge about osteology is must so in today's session we will be discussing about the clavicle the so clavicle otherwise it is also called as the collar bone other name for the clavicle is collar bone so this forms a part of the pectoral girdle so this clavicle has got some peculiarities this is a modified long bone so why do we say it is a modified long bone is it is missing some features of the long bone it though it is a long bone it won't have a medullary cavity so there is no medullary cavity in the clavicle and this is the only long bone in the body which is placed horizontally the remaining all bones they will be placed vertically but this is the only long bone of the body which is placed horizontally and then other uh, peculiarities is so this undergoes a membranous ossification all of you know all the long bones they undergo cartilaginous ossification but this is the only long bone which will undergo a membranous ossification and coming to its location it is present subcutaneously it is present subcutaneously just below the skin under cover of a muscle which is called as platysma so uh, and other peculiarities in relation to its ossification is this is the first bone to starts its ossification it will start its ossification at about 5 to 6 weeks of the intrauterine life and this is the again last bone to complete ossification so the shaft will complete its ossification after 21 years of the age so this is the first bone to start ossification and this is the last bone to complete its ossification coming to the functions of this clavicle this uh, clavicle it places the scapula at a lateral level in order to allow for your upper limb to swing across your uh, body without touching the trunk and it helps in transmitting the weight to the axial skeleton it transmits the weight of the upper limb to the axial skeleton so these are the it acts like a strut strut bone okay so uh, what i told you it keeps the uh, scapula at a lateral level lateral level so these are the functions of the clavicle now coming to the presenting parts of the clavicle so see carefully the presenting parts of the clavicle it has got a medial end it has got a lateral end and it has got a shaft it has got a medial end lateral end and a shaft how do we identify the medial end the medial end it is broad and quadrangular in shape it is broad and quadrangular in shape and this is the lateral end which is flattened flattened in shape so this is the lateral end the medial end otherwise is called as the sternal end and the lateral end is otherwise called as the acromion end and this is the shaft the shaft if you see it is not straight it is sinuously curved it is curved it is curved in such a way that it is convex anteriorly in the medial two third part and concave anteriorly in the lateral one third part okay so convex anteriorly in the medial two third part and concave laterally in the lateral one third part and in the inferior surface of the medial end of the clavicle you see one groove this is called as the subclavian groove so basing keeping all these uh, factors in mind we will determine the side of the clavicle so we will put the broad sternal medial end facing medially and we'll put the flat acromion end facing laterally and we'll put the shaft in such a way that the it is convex in its medial two thirds and concave in its lateral one third and the subclavian groove facing inferiorly so by that we can say that this is the right side clavicle so that is how we will determine the side 
Now coming to the points. How, uh, what are all the features in individual? So coming to the medial end. So this is the broad quadrangular sternal end of the clavicle which is wide and this will articulate with a similar articular facet which is present on the manubrium sternum and the first coastal cartilage to form the sternoclavicular joint. Okay, so the medial end of the clavicle will form the sternoclavicular joint and this medial end is placed in the body in such a way that it is facing downwards, downwards in compared to the lateral end. So coming to the lateral end of the clavicle. So this is the lateral end of the clavicle which bears one oval articular facet. This is the oval articular facet which will articulate with a similar articular facet which is present on the medial surface of the acromion process of the scapula to form the acromio clavicular joint. Okay. So on the medial surface it is articulating with sternum to form the sternoclavicular joint. On the lateral surface it is articulating with the acromion process to form the acromio clavicular joint. Now let's have a look at the shaft. Shaft. So this is the shaft. Uh, it is divisible into lateral one third part and a medial two third parts. So this is the medial two third part and this is the lateral one third part. So the medial two third part is cylindrical in shape and lateral one third part is flattened. flattened. So we will describe the lateral one third part first. So the lateral one third part has got a concave anterior border so this is the anterior border and convex posterior border this is the posterior border it has got a superior surface and it has got a inferior surface okay so presenting parts of the lateral one third of the shaft it has got a anterior border posterior border superior surface and a inferior surface so we will describe each one so this anterior concave border, it gives origin to the anterior fibers of the deltoid muscle, deltoid muscle of the arm. Posterior uh, convex border, it will receive the insertion of the anterior fibers of trapezius muscle, trapezius muscle. And coming to the inferior surface, you see there is one tubercle and there is one line. So this is called as Conoid tubercle which is present at the junction of medial and medial two thirds and lateral one third. This is the conoid tubercle and there you can see there is one line extending from the conoid tubercle that is called as trapezoid line. Conoid tubercle and trapezoid line. These are present in the inferior surface of the lateral one third. So these will give attachment to the conoid and trapezoid part of the coracoclavicular ligaments. So those are the attachments on the lateral one third of the clavicle. So we have seen anterior border giving origin to deltoid, posterior border giving insertion to trapezius and in the inferior surface we have seen the conoid tubercle and the trapezoid line. Now moving on, we will move on to the medial two thirds of the clavicle. So medial two thirds of the clavicle, it is cylindrical in shape. So it has got a superior surface, it has got an inferior surface, it has got an anterior surface and it has got a posterior surface. So the anterior surface, anterior surface will give origin to the pectoralis major muscle, pectoralis major muscle, the anterior two thirds of the uh, medial surface will give origin to the pectoralis major. So and in the superior surface, this is the superior surface. So in the medial part of the superior surface, it will give origin to the cleidomastoid muscle. Coming to the posterior surface, in the posterior surface, in the near the medial end, it will give origin to the sternohyoid muscle. And in the inferior surface, as I told you previously, this is the subclavian groove for the attachment of the subclavius muscle, subclavius muscle. And you see these are the two lips of the subclavian groove which will give attachment to the clavipectoral fascia and in the groove you have got the attachment of the subclavius muscle. Okay, so that is about the medial end and this posterior surface 
of the medial end of the clavicle you see it is concave concave so it will give protection to all the structures of the root of the neck okay so that is the importance of the clavicle so coming to this clavicle the junction between the medial two thirds and later one third is considered to be the weakest point of the clavicle. So that is the commonest site for fracture for this clavicle. Okay. So the, uh, this is about the osteology of clavicle. As I told you, it will begin its ossification at about five to six weeks of gestation uh, of intrauterine life and it will complete its ossification by 21 to 31 years of age. So first to begin ossification and the last bone to complete its ossification. So in this video we have discussed about the peculiarities of clavicle, functions of clavicle and all the details of the clavicle. So in my next, se uh, next session we will discuss about the remaining bones of the upper limb. So thank you for watching.